Welcome to the CADFIM ANSYS tutorials. In this presentation I'd like to show you how to use nonlinear models in ANSYS. This involves looking at plasticity with the aim of understanding permanent deformation and also permanent strain on a component. We're going to use a clip used to close padded envelopes as our example. We will examine the nonlinear definition of material properties and set up the analysis relating to loading, deformation and springback resulting from unloading. And at the end of the analysis we're going to look at deformation and plastic strain. The geometry is generated in Design Modeler. In this case we're looking at a half model with its corresponding outline, dimensions, measurements and the 3D function used to generate the geometry. In this particular application, the definition of material properties is of course critical. We require plasticity in order to map permanent deformation. We change over to engineering data and complete the definition of the steel, which together with its properties can be closely examined below with respect to plasticity. There are various models for plasticity within ANSYS. Here we're using multilinear kinematic hardening. Drag this onto steel using drag and drop and here on the right side you can input the temperature dependent stress strain curve. So for example if we now define the curve as 20 degrees we can transfer the corresponding strain values from Excel using cut and paste. The values being transferred are plastic strain and the corresponding stress. It should here be noted that we're not referring to engineering stress and strain but rather true stress and strain. We return to the project like this and draft the model. So that the non-linearity in the material is available in the simulation, we need to make sure the non-linear effects in the material definition are set to active for the selected component. Standard mesh density is not sufficient when it comes to describing plasticity, and the surface layers are not resolved with sufficient precision when only one element is present across the diameter. In other words, we define the element variable such that we obtain seven divisions across the diameter, thus enabling us to obtain results that are sufficiently accurate with regards to plasticity. We're now going to utilize this mesh. We define our boundary conditions. So, the boundary conditions consist of the symmetry condition in the form of an upper surface support and then a constraint in the z-axis such that our component is defined and loaded. The load is to be applied via a pressure which assumes there's a fairly thick thumb being used to bend the clip open. Furthermore, let's now define our results, deformation, plastic strain and the total strain and then we need to perform some analyses. We need to start large deflection and then also the time stepping and we set this stepped load control so that we start with one one hundredth of the load and perform at least ten load steps and we bring it down to one one thousandth of the load in tricky situations, such as when severe plasticization occurs. That's to say the load increase is adjusted dynamically in terms of its complexity, nonlinearity, and plasticity. That's to say that in the first load step we introduce the load, and in the second step we reduce the load step to zero. Then we start the analysis, and after a few moments we obtain a result. Now let's take a look at what happens. Using an animation, we see the clip opens out, and then once it's been unloaded it springs back to a degree. It opens out and springs back. Now let's look at the second result, the plastic strain. We see that the plastic strain is 0.068 millimeters per millimeter. 
or leaving aside units, this corresponds to a strain of 6.8%. With a brittle material like cast iron or ceramics, this would lead to failure. 